And now for the fun part, cleaning all of this mess up and selling it. This is a really consistent way to generate a ton of currency, and it doesn't require any big RNG spikes or fishing the league mechanic or anything like that. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to talk about how I've been making about 15 divines per hour using essences and alva. But before I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, let's talk about this strategy and kind of cover what makes it special. We're farming essences. This is a stash tab I've filled up in only the span of 12 maps, and it's, as you can see, it's got a lot of essences in there. Essences, just to kind of give the most basic rundown, they're a crafting currency. The whole point of them really is that they are a chaos orb with a guaranteed stat on them, so you can combine them with like a fractured item, and then spam the essence until you get some stat that you like, and then kind of continue crafting from there. They're pretty good, and I think one of the things that really makes them such a good, valuable currency to farm is that when people want to do essence crafting, they don't need like one, they need lots. They need lots of them at once, and they are willing to pay a premium for a bulk supply. And that is exactly what this strategy farms. You farm tons and tons of essences. You can easily pull down 50 deafening essences per map. Not an exaggeration. Also, I am not worried about this crashing the market at all, because the market already crashed, and it is still very strong. As for whether it's fun, whatever, that's always a concern. For me, I do like essence farming, so I am really enjoying it, I do find it fun. Now let's actually kind of talk about just what you do. You want to look for a map that has multiple bosses. It's not a requirement, but it is definitely preferred and they need to be T6 plus. Now there really isn't any sort of advantage to doing them at like tier 16. So tier six is actually fine. It's easier, it's faster, and it will generally make you more profit per hour. Having multiple bosses will split up the essence buffs. And I kind of like maps that are long hallways. So like promenade is pretty good, promenade. Um, what are some other ones here? Courthouse is okay because the bosses are split off in a separate room and there are three different bosses. There are a lot of good maps like that. Strand is kind of a classic favorite. Basically anything that you can get into the yellow range, yellow map range that is a long hallway and doesn't really require any backtracking to the boss. As soon as you get to the boss, they might be a little dangerous. So you throw down a, a portal a little bit away from the boss and then you kill them and then, then you grab everything and you leave. Now, in terms of the costs, I think it's best if we kind of look at some of the Atlas passives and then talk about the Scarabs, because those are the basically the extent of the cost of running this. So we'll start with the Atlas passives. We're obviously taking pretty much all of the Essence clusters along the way. We're taking Prolific Essence, of course, so we get more Essences. We're taking Crystal Lattice and all the things along the way to that so that all of our Essences are more rewarding. We're taking Crystal Resonance, which has basically replaced the old mechanism that made all of the... Uh, all of the essences that you would fight duplicate. It now is basically like a, a gamble node. GGD is kind of radically expanding new vectors in gambling. So what this does is it makes the map boss gain a random essence modifier from any imprisoned monster that you slay in your maps. And that's key because it says a map boss. And that is why we like multiple map bosses is because it won't split them. Like you're not getting double dipping on the money, but you are um, getting them spread around to different bosses. <laughs> So you won't be fighting one boss with like 35 essence modifiers on it. At the end of a map, you'll be fighting like three bosses with 10 or 12 essence modifiers each. And because essences have like a multiplicative effect, this actually makes them significantly easier to deal with, I think, for most builds. Having compared like big, nasty, 30 buffed single target bosses and also nasty 10 buffed three target bosses, I definitely found the AOE situation to be a lot easier to deal with. Also, it makes it so that using Remnants of Corruption on Imprisoned Monsters in your maps replaces all essences with one of the essences on the Imprisoned Monster, and it's kind of just randomly chosen. I think it's sort of weighted toward being low tier. I have generally lost most of the gambles that I've made. I still do it from time to time, but it is very much a gamble choice. So I really haven't come up with a great rubric for like, oh yeah, this is the situation where you need to corrupt your essence monsters. It's basically, do you feel lucky? Go for it if you don't, don't. And most importantly, Corrupting purple essences, I've corrupted, I don't know, 100 purple essences, zero corrupted essences out of it. So it, it's hard to prove a negative, but I think that pretty conclusively proves it for me. If you take Crystal Resonance, you can no longer corrupt your way into having corrupted essences. 
but the upside is that you might kill some map bosses and gain 40 essences off of them. So I think the, uh, the upside outweighs the downside there. And then finally, Amplified Energies was kind of the big casualty going into this patch. Everybody was sure that essences were dead, including me. I was sure of it. Uh, they made it so that imprisoned essences in your maps will have one essence at the highest possible tier. And they made it so that white maps had a maximum of screaming. That's the tier three essence when previously it was tier one. And so now essences in yellow maps are what you need to farm kind of at a minimum for it to be profitable. And they can only be a maximum of tier two. But that is why we run Essence Scarab of Ascent. This adds one tier onto all of the essences that are in the area after this Amplified Energies has been added in. So that means that every single essence that you run into in your maps will have at least one deafening, sometimes multiple deafenings, which is really, really strong. Now, with that being said, the sort of like default cheapo basic way to do essence farming would be to do exactly that. You would throw an essence scarab of ascent into every map, and then you would just fit as many essence scarabs as you can in, and you would run the map and you might get 10, 12 essences per map. And, you know, that's that's OK. That's not bad. Where we're able to really, really juice this like to the moon is by running essence scarab of calcification. This makes it so that rare monsters that are natural inhabitants of the area are imprisoned by essences. It basically converts every rare that is pre-spawned in the map into an essence. And so this sort of seems like, okay, so anything that's a league mechanic at all won't work, right? Mostly. Alva rares, for some reason, rares inside of Alva's incursions will be essences. So sometimes there are no rares in an Alva incursion. Sometimes there will be four. I would say on average, it's about two. So by running Alva and taking, where is it over here? Artifacts of the Vol and having four incursions, you add about eight more essences into your maps. Additionally, you can run two Scarabs of Adversaries, which add four additional rare packs, but the, the rares are mirrored. So there's two rares in each pack. You can run two of these Scarabs. So that gives you an extra eight rares per Scarab, so 16 extra rares. So you're getting about eight more rares out of Alva. You're also getting the benefits of running Alva. You're getting a little bit of bubblegum currency that you get from opening cursed treasures. And more importantly, you're able to build some useful temples that you can sell to other people or run yourself, uh, you know, try and get lucky with some corruptions. And then you're also adding 16 rares with Scarab of adversaries or adversaries. And then also all of the rares that exist in the map and then on top of that, we're basically just taking all the nodes that we can to make the maps faster and easier and throw more scarabs at us. So I just am going to kind of look at those a little bit here. We're taking this node right here packed with energy since we're able to do Alpha and Nico in the same map. I'm also taking pretty much all the stuff I need to requ uh, required to spawn Nico in every map. I think technically speaking, my chance is 96% to have Nico spawn. I can't remember any maps that I've had him not show up in, but you know, one out of every 25 or so, I suppose. We are taking a lot of Scarab nodes. As you can see, we're taking Amplified Artifacts, which does make a lot of the Essence monsters drop Scarabs. They have a 50% increased chance to throw Scarabs at you per monster mod on them. And I think Essence mods count as a monster mod, so I've, I've gotten a lot of scarabs from essence monsters. I could be mistaken, but either way, they have high quant on them just by default, so they do throw a lot of scarabs at you. We're also taking just like, you know, skittering swarms, a lot of the different scarab nodes along the way. Remarkable relics is important. And then because the main scarabs that we really want are essence scarabs, obviously, to keep our own costs down, and reliquary scarabs are okay because sometimes you'll get the one that spawns the nameless seer and you know if you get that that's kind of a jackpot and then i'm doing a couple of different other strategies as well harbinger and ambush strategies and harbinger and ambush strategies are very common right now and their scarabs are very valuable so we're taking all four of these sort of scarab waiting nodes to force more of those four types of scarabs onto our maps Additionally, we are blocking a ton of content because most of the scarabs that are associated with content like, well, that can be turned off, ritual, blight, uh, you know, ultimatum, etc. Most of those scarabs are very low value. So by turning off all of those scarabs, we're not reducing the amount of scarabs we're getting in a map. We're just making it so that the scarabs won't be like, you know, worthless expedition scarabs. They will be more valuable ones like div card scarabs, essence scarabs, 
uh, ambush scarabs. So we're kind of putting our thumb on the scale a bit in making all of the scarabs be more valuable and then also just giving ourselves like shrine buff and Einhard to make ours zooming through these maps even faster. So now let's actually look at my little uh, spreadsheet that I've made up here. We are using three different types of scarabs. We're using two adversary scarabs that cost a whopping one chaos each. We're doing tier six maps, tier seven maps. You can basically do whatever map you really, whatever map you like. Um, like I said, I have been doing a combination of like promenade and uh, strand, I suppose I've done some of and I have just, you know, a lot of maps that Courthouse, I think, is one that I played around with a lot. Just maps that have like multiple bosses and are kind of a long walk toward the boss so that you are uh, getting everything on the way to them and not like getting to the boss and realizing, oh, I've missed half a dozen essences and having to leave and come back. All those maps are going to be super cheap. They're pretty self farmable, I suppose. The real big cost here is the calcification scarabs. Those are expensive. They cost about half a divine in bulk. And, you know, I have been buying them somewhat in bulk. But the thing is, if you're willing to buy them like one at a time, you can really shave a lot of the cost off of this initially, kind of get yourself started. Some of them are buyable for 50, 60 chaos in smaller quantities. And that can definitely be helpful when you're kind of getting things rolling initially. Then the other one, the Essence Scarab of Ascent. In bulk, I think they go for maybe 15 chaos. That might be even on the high end. And then obviously we're running the map device at a whopping three chaos for two extra essences per map. So on the whole, the high estimate for what we're spending per map is almost 100 chaos each. Now, I think that this number on the calcification, that might be a little high. You know, realistically, I think if you're willing to kind of spend some time trading with people, you might be able to get away with paying more like 60 chaos each. I think the common price that you see people asking for when they're selling them for divines rather than chaos is about 0.4 of a divine and 0.4 of a divine is, if I remember correctly, like 50 something chaos. Yeah, 56 chaos. So there's definitely some potential for like a shrewd negotiator to cut their costs a little bit here per map. But either way, even if we're assuming high, you know, let's say things explode again. 75 chaos per map, that's by far your biggest cost. And I think, you know, this is a post I saw the title of on uh, the top of the PoE Reddit earlier today. Don't be afraid to spend chaos to juice your maps. You know, I think especially for newer players, that can be a fear. It was when I first started out. And I think one of the things that I kind of finally learned as I got more experience with the game was that it's it's totally fine to spend chaos boosting up your maps if they are more reliable strategies like this one. It's spending a lot of currency on very RNG heavy strategies like trying to farm div cards or something that can be like a real big gamble and leave you just uh, hurting at the end, you know, totally in the hole. In terms of the profit that we've made, almost all of it comes from essences. I have used Wealthy Exile just to kind of compare all of this. And as you can see, we've profited or I should say revenue has been about 25 divines. And this is only in 12 maps. This is less than two hours of farming. 25 divines in total and we can kind of look at the value of these it's about 21 in terms of essences in total i haven't converted any of these essences yet but you know 20 divines in high tier essences and then some low tier essences that i could convert up and that would probably be about another divines worth so about 21 divines worth of essences a couple divines worth of scarabs about a divine and a half worth of currency very little bit worth of fragments that's that's really not much and then something that hasn't been calculated in Wealthy Exile, because it can't, is some of these Chronicles of Atzawadl, which I have put into the spreadsheet here. So I've made four uh, Chronicles of Atzawadl to trade off. One of them was just a total dud. Two of them had Doriani's Institutes. I'm probably just going to run those myself and corrupt some gems. Corrupting gems is very fun. And then one had both a Locus of Corruption and a Doriani's Institute. And I might run that myself and try to double corrupt some gear. Or, you know, I might sell that. And that's worth about 100 chaos as well. So even if you don't really care for Alva, even if you don't really want to put in the uh, effort to make Alva good, that's fine, right? Even if all of your Alva, like, let's just say all of my Alvas had been duds, total duds, right? Um, still profitable, still making a, like more than twice in terms of profit coming back with more than twice of what I put in. So 
definitely very good. And then the possibility of getting a little bit of extra currency out of Alva is also good. Alva is a currency strategy that appreciates pretty heavily throughout the league because I think a lot of high level players consider doing Alva a chore. And so, you know, by doing the chore for them, they are uh, willing to pay to rake the leaves, basically. All right, now one strategy or sort of tip I want to give for selling off this currency that I think is really important for people when selling essences is you want to do a couple of things. First of all, you want to look at the price of them, and this is kind of something that Wealthy Exile does. I'm not faulting Wealthy Exile at all for this. I think that is it is the correct approach here, but okay. Let's look at deafening essences of, of loathing. I have 21 of them. The price listed is eight chaos each, but let's actually look at deafening essences of loathing here. So because they're essences, because they're sold in bulk, they are worth more in larger supply. So if we were to say, what is the value of a deafening essence of loathing when I have a stock of like over 20 or 30 or whatever, you'll see the price is significantly higher. It's more like 10 chaos each. Again, this isn't a fault on the, on the part of Wealthy Exile. It's a good it's a good website, right? But this is something you need to keep in mind whenever you're selling essences is you can charge more because you have more. People will be willing to pay more for your large supply for your bulk. And so because of that, you want to make sure that you're never just pricing at, you know, whatever the set price is. It also means that all of our our profit estimates at this point are an underestimate. So when it comes to selling them, you want to make sure that you have a good supply and kind of compare what the price on that amount that you have is. Now, this isn't like a ton of deafening essences of woe, so I think about four chaos a piece is good. But you don't want to sell these one at a time. You don't want to just open up your tab and go, OK, four chaos, boom, done. Because then you're going to get hit up by people who are trying to buy one or three, and that's that's no good. So at the bare minimum, what you want to do is you want to sell them nine at a time. And so the math on that's pretty simple. 36 divided by nine is four. And so if you put it in as 36 divided by nine, then people will be able to buy them for four chaos each, but in increments of nine. Now, if you want to be a little sneaky with this, you can even like round down by one just to kind of undercut people. And you know what? They will sell faster. I, if I wanted to buy a bunch of deafening essences of woe and I saw somebody had a hundred of them at four chaos each and somebody else had a hundred of them at 3.99999 chaos each i would go with the 3.99999 guy so that is definitely a move if you're have any point kind of having any trouble getting them to move round down by like one from what your target number is and they probably will move faster one thing I almost forgot to mention is upgrading all of your uh, screaming and shrieking essences. I, I actually came back and re-recorded this uh, after the fact because I wanted to make sure that I got this out there. So for the most part, you can upgrade everything all the way up to deafening. There's one thing that you don't want to upgrade to deafening in my experience, and that would be, I guess, two things, really screaming, screaming essences of greed and shrieking essences of greed like greeds are fine. Uh, all of these will sell. Uh, honestly, it's nice to just like if you're going to play another character, you're going to roll any kind of gear just to have some like tier three essences of greed, just to be able to slap them onto just kind of whatever random fractured piece and like make something that has some life. And then there you go. It's kind of useful. The other one would be shrieking essences of zeal. Uh, they give 30 percent increased move speed and deafening essences of zeal give 32 percent. No one on Earth is going to notice that extra two percent movement speed. So Shrieking Essences of Zeal are actually quite value, uh, valuable. They hold a lot of their value. And the only real reason that you would need Deafening Essences of Zeal instead would be for like gloves and weapons where that increased modifier is significantly higher. As you can see, like 17 to 18% attack speed on gloves as opposed to 14 to 16. Well, the native tier one attack speed roll for gloves is 16, 14 to 16%. So by using Zeals, you can actually get higher than that a possible roll just like from a chaos orb or whatever and the same goes for weapons the tier one uh attack speed roll for most weapons is like stops at 27 percent, just like a shrieking so deafening essences of zeal are good for things that are based on like attack speed but for movement speed shrieking essence is fine so i always keep these three basically greeds i just keep just as they are i, I upgrade them all to screaming but then i stop there I upgrade to Shrieking Essences of Zeal, and I will sell Deafening and buy Deafening Essences of Zeal, but I keep those separate. 
And then Shrieking Essence of, of Dread, the main use for them, pretty much the only thing that anybody uses them for is the bow plus two to level a socket of bow gems. And that is the exact same modifier with the exact same other random rolls, whether it's Shrieking or Deafening. So those you would keep unupgraded, but then everything else you can basically upgrade all the way up to Deafening and it's totally fine. Maybe you lose like, you know, a few chaos or whatever in terms of overall value, but I don't think so. Ultimately, it's all about bulk and, you know, bulk deafenings in particular. Now, something also that you can do that I didn't include is some of these ones that are not that valuable, deafening essences of suffering, for example, basically any of the ones that add, you know, flat damage to spells. Usually they're not as valuable. So depending on the value of harvest juice and it's blue harvest juice specifically, you can take them over to the Harvest Crafts Crafting Bench and type Essence and then throw them in there and re-roll them and try to get a more valuable Essence, which I didn't. Now this takes uh, 30 blue juice per roll. Right now the price of blue juice is like 55 juice per chaos, so it's about a little over half a chaos per Essence that you're rolling and you can roll nine of them at a time and you know I'm kind of throwing money away here. Um, but that is something you can do. It's kind of just something you want to consider, maybe depending on the price of things like the low value ones, you can roll them up to more more valuable ones like, well, not fear as often, uh, but like loathing is generally the most valuable. Zeal can be really valuable. Contempt can be pretty valuable. So can greed. So, you know, kind of something you want to keep your eyes on just in the market and, and just look out for. All right, now just to kind of in the interest of showing off how to do this, I'm just going to actually like run a map and kind of talk about it a bit. I have one else, uh, one essence scarab of calcification left. I have a couple uh, ascents left, and then I put in, you know, two different stacks of scarabs of adversaries. I'm just going to double check. OK, I don't have an alpha waiting to go, so that's good. Make sure my passives are set correctly. Map device is set to essence. We'll open it up. And then we'll look here. OK, nothing super special, nothing super fancy on any of these um, necropolis things, and that's fine. Just going to go ahead and go. One thing I do want to point out here before I jump in, though, is and I'm scrolling down to the bottom of my notes here. If you are going to add any all flames, be careful with that. I added some syndicate researchers into one of these tabs, I think the first one and for whatever reason, whenever they were the essence monster, they despawned. They gave no essences. They gave no scarabs. They gave no rewards at all. They wasted like 25 deafening essences or maybe more in a single map. So be very, very wary of adding any all flame ember guys, but especially the syndicate researchers. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to be playing with the all flames at all while doing this strategy, to be honest. And that probably is the biggest downside of doing this strategy is you're kind of taking yourself away. You know, I played with all flames prior to those and I'd had no problems. I think it was just those one one set of guys. Uh, but, you know, like the corpses are level 73 or 75 or whatever. Like, I'm not really worried about any of the necropolis stuff in this strategy. I'm not taking any of the passives for it, so I don't really care. But it does sort of feel like, you know, kind of stepping away from the league mechanic. So that is probably the biggest downside of this strategy. Something to do for a while and then kind of come back to. And of course, there's a corpse right there. Nice. And so, yeah, basically what we do here is exactly this. We just zip through the map, killing dudes along the way. Anytime we run into Alva, we run her temple and kill any of the essence monsters that are in there. And as you can see, we have at least two in this area. And I'm just going to kind of keep on zipping through, looking for monsters to kill, killing these essences. OK, this is something I was kind of hoping would happen so I could talk about it. Soul Eaters, uh, they're the worst. Soul Eater essences are very, very annoying because of the Soul Eater buff granting mobs less damage taken, 2% less damage taken per stack, up to 45 stacks, so 90% less damage taken. Uh, I think even though it is not worse for, you know, like hardcore players, for me as a softcore trade Andy, uh, I think it might be worse than it was now. And yeah, once you finish the incursion, it will throw out all the essences and any sort of bubblegum currency that you got from opening up the cursed caches or just killing dudes inside of Alva's temple. And then that's that's basically all that there is to it. I think the only thing really left to talk about here is just kind of 
I will finish up the rest of the map, but basically just like you want to make sure you remember to set a portal near the map boss just in case. If you are doing promenade, promenade, which you don't have to, any map can work. But if you are doing this map, uh, you want to make sure to check past the bosses because sometimes alvas and essences will spawn and sometimes a lot of them will spawn in the little nook that's right behind the boss. I've had like 15 essences back there between alva and actual real spawned essences past the boss. Other than that, you just want to make sure you don't miss any essences along the way. Do all the alvas. All right, cool. A corruption chamber. Now, something that I have kind of done with this particular strategy is I just haven't worried that much about whether my alva temples are great. Like, obviously, if they're good, that's good. You know, it's free money. I'm not going to say no to getting a couple like 100 chaos or so from a temple every three maps. That's pretty good. But the amount of currency that that adds compared to the essences is pretty trivial. And definitely getting all of the essences in the Alva incursions is more important. Like if you really wanted to just you hate Alva for whatever reason, you just wanted to zone in and do the Alva incursions just to kill the essences and then leave without interacting with it as a mechanic. That can work. But I like Alva, so you should just do her. <laughs> All right, you do want to be careful. I died. I died against a rare. <laughs> uh, something you you do want to be careful with is just how deadly some of these rares can be. Like you really you want to make sure you're not like standing in any of their mechanics or any of their uh, dead eight deads or anything. Something I had considered and ultimately decided against because I was worried that they would kill me was adding Einhar into this as well. Now potentially he can add a few rares. Potentially. But the possibility of doing like a Red Beast Essence mob, which is essentially what you would be signing up for, Red Beast Essence mobs. Uh, you know, Essence mobs sometimes can be tanky enough on their own. So adding like the Red Beast-ness into that, it, it's an option. It's definitely something you could consider instead of having uh, all of the points for for Nico, you could add in Einhar as well. I would prefer not to do it just simply because of the interest of time. I think it could be better like currency per whatever price, uh, ba basically return on investment. It could be better for return on investment, but I think it could probably wind up being worse just in terms of like currency per hour because you're spending a lot of time fighting red beasts. And also it makes Einhar quite a lot worse because you're not doing Einhar in the uh, like tier one to tier four range where you've locked out, blocked out all of the low value, high level beasts, and you're just focusing on Krykic Chimerals. Unfortunately, by doing this in the tier six map range, you are opening up a lot of uh, low value, like <laughs> bad beasts, essentially. So your your Einhar profits are going to be like a lot worse because you're doing the level that you have to in order to farm essences at the same time. This is a really juicy one. Four essences in a single... in a single uh, incursion. That's pretty good. All right, looks like we got everything, and this one's connected to everything, so let's get out of here. Oh, cursed treasure. Something that can be a little sketchy with this boss set in particular is sometimes they will spawn like a handful of essences right around them. I kind of like to play around the outside and pop all those essences and kill them before I kill the bosses so that they will transfer their essences over. And we've done that. So now we can kill these bosses and then we're done. It's funny that that one essence mob killed me and yet I could just sit here and face tank these bosses that have like a billion essences in them. I don't know what I did wrong. I'm going to look back at the tape and I will have just like not hit my life flask for like 10 seconds before that mob killed me. I'm sure. Also tape. I'm 1000 years old. All right. That's pretty much how I run all of these maps. Usually they're not seven minutes long. Maybe they are. Usually they're a little shorter because I'm not getting killed. But either way. And just to kind of do a little quick check here. We're at 25 divines is what the cost or what the value that was in this tab was listed at before. I still have all my affinities set up. I had affinities for uh, 
fragments, essences, and currency. So we're just gonna lob all this stuff in there and then I will just quickly change zones a time or two just to kind of jog the uh jog my stash inventory and then we'll refresh and we'll see how much i made okay so over two divines from that map you know somewhere between two and three divines from a single map and again yeah we're spending upwards of half a divine per map to do this but i mean as you can see we're still profiting well over a divine every single map so if you're able to do these uh, you know if you're able to not die <laughs> <laughs> and you're able to do these in like six minutes or five minutes and still extract this much profit. You could be looking at 15 divines, 18 divines, you know, 20 divines per hour, depending on how fast you're able to do this. And that, I mean, that really is the main limiting factor on just how much profit you're able to extract from this currency strategy, more so than any of the costs or the like prices on essences, because not that those are like fixed. They'll definitely continue to fluctuate throughout the league. But generally speaking, this is a strategy that high level juicers are not going to be as thrilled about doing compared to doing tier 16 high level juice stuff, tier 17 high level juice stuff. So if anything, the profit margin on this is going to get better over time, not worse. So with all that being said, I would encourage you to do this strategy. I think it works really, really well. I've been doing it a lot. I've been enjoying it a lot, and I'm going to continue doing this going forward just as a very consistent way to make a lot of currency. Probably use this to farm like a headhunter, for example. I think realistically you could farm a headhunter in a Saturday afternoon just doing this strategy. All right, I think that pretty much covers it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Have fun farming essences. Bye.